Hi, today we're going to address what are the red flags in speech and language for children. My name is Patricia Ruiz and I am a bilingual speech language pathologist and I'm here just to educate parents a little bit on what they should look for. So, babies at 12 months should be saying their first words such as mama and papa. They should have been babbling and cooing since eight months on. Um, First words are very important because they're developmental milestones. They go together such as walking that should be in the first 12 months, such as sitting that should be in the first six months, such as talking, which is important. Um, if your baby starts walking before he starts talking, that's okay because usually one milestone takes over the other milestones. But if he's not meeting any of the milestones at the correct time, then this could be a red flag for your baby. So what should you look for? A 12-month-old baby should say at least one word besides mama and papa, then the next word such as animal names and things like that. Um, what is a inappropriate sign? For example, your baby should respond to his name when he's being called. He should be able to have eye contact with a parent for at least one minute. He should be able to engage in a play routine um, with other children or with parents themselves. If you notice that your child has poor eye contact or poor eye gaze, he's not babbling as he should. He's not saying mama or papa or tata or any of those kind of words that go with the vocal A. Um, you should talk to your pediatrician about it because this could be a red flag. So once you've realized that your baby's 12 months and he's talking appropriately as he should, we should move on to one or two years old, which when they start acquiring language, and then two to three years old. Two to three year olds is the most important part of language communication. It's when children acquire the most words. They can acquire from 50 to 500 words at the age of two. They learn how to add words, add nouns, add verbs, add proverbs. So from two to three, it is the most crucial time for children to develop language. If you notice or you have concerns, you're probably right. If you are concerned about your child's speech, there probably is something wrong. So please don't wait till they're three or four because somebody tells you that they started talking late. The most important part is from two to three. Now, what are the red flags of two to three for children? If your child is not putting two words together, such as a verb and a noun, like mommy eats, mommy sleep, that is not appropriate. If they're putting two words together that are just nouns, it's not appropriate. It has to be verb and noun and then adding on from there. They should do two to three word utterances or phrases. They should have eye contact. They should be able to play with other kids. Um, in such instances, such as autism, there are some very immediate red flags when it comes to language on kids that are about two years old. Autistic children, for the most part, don't have any eye contact. They do not respond to their name they are compulsive about doing certain things. They have echolalia, which most parents think it's okay because they're repeating words, but they're not being used functionally. Words need to be used functionally. They need to call their mom, mom. They need to use words as for in a communication. No, no gestures and no physical pointing. We want kids to use the words appropriately. So autistic kids most of the time repeat words, which is called echolalia. They will have physical direction, so they'll take their parents to point the things they want. They'll use gestures. They won't respond to their name. Um, they'll flip the light switches on and off. They might start walking on their tippy toes. There's very, very interesting characteristics for kids with autism. So if you see any of it, it doesn't mean that he has or she has autism. It just means that it might be a red flag. Um, these are important things that you should definitely talk to your pediatrician about and get a referral for speech and language evaluations because we know that autism is, the majority, is a social pragmatic disorder. Um, it's a communication barrier. So the most important person in that equation for autism is a speech language pathologist. So besides autism, that is a very common disorder nowadays. It's getting more prevalent, especially in boys. Um, there's other disorders, such as a language disorder. Let me first explain what is a language disorder. So communication is separated into three areas. There's speech, there's language, there's pragmatics. Speech is your articulation. Are you intelligible? Your pronunciation? Are your sounds 
perfect when you say the S sound, the R sound. That we talk about as being speech impediments. Speech impediments are pronunciation mistakes. So if you have a lisp, if you can't say the letter R, those kind of things, or you talk too fast, you talk too slow, you don't pause in the right places, those kind of disorders are considered to be speech related. Now, language disorders, there's two kinds of language disorders. There's receptive language disorders, which are, do you comprehend? Do you comprehend the language that's being spoken to you? Can you identify things? Are you receptively understanding and listening what is being said to you? So that is considered a receptive language delay. And then there's the expressive language delay, which is what you say. Um, not exactly if you're pronouncing those sounds correctly, but are you grammatically correct? Are your sentences correct? Is your verbal production that you're putting out correct? So there's many different aspects of different speech, language, receptive, expressive disorders, delays. And then of course there's pragmatic delays, your social skills. Do you greet people when you walk through the door? Do you say hi? Are you socially acceptable? Do you give people personal space? Do you wait for people to answer questions? All these things are social language, which us as humans separates us from animals that we're socially able to have a social language without words. So speech language pathologists also take care of pragmatic skills. Are you socially um, appropriate when you meet other people? Do you have good eye contact? Do you not look down? All these things are things that you have to take a notice when you have kids and see if there's a red flag. Now. Once you've identified or you thought to yourself, okay, maybe there is a red flag, maybe my son or daughter is not exactly on point, what should you do? My recommendation is that you call your pediatrician and you request a speech language pathology referral. So most of us work with insurances. You need to make sure that your pediatrician gives you a referral so you're able to contact a speech language pathologist so they could evaluate your child. Um, most of pediatricians will tell you that they'll ask you why and you'll just state your concerns and that should be enough. Your concerns should be enough for a referral. Once you have a referral in your hand, you should contact your insurance company and make sure that your policy does cover speech therapy and where and have them provide you a provider that's in their network so it could be easier for you to contact somebody. And then once you contact the correct provider from your plan, a speech pathologist should be able to evaluate your son. They're going to give them formal assessment depending on what the prescription says. So it is important that you explain to the pediatrician what your concern is. Is it an, a pronunciation concern? Is it that he doesn't listen? Or is it that he doesn't speak in many words? Like you need to be specific because we will conduct assessments based on what your prescription says. And then once you get to the therapist, you should be in good hands. So I wanna thank you guys for tuning in. And I also wanna ask you to share my video online if you liked it, if it was helpful, if you could please subscribe to my channel. I would like to keep coming on and sharing different tips and advices and things to do. So if you also wanna reach me, my website is miamispeechinstitute.com. My email is miamispeechinstitute at gmail. My name is Patricia Ruiz, so if you could please share my video and subscribe, that'd be great. Thanks for watching.